Good morning, everybody. This is Chris, and uh, welcome to my first live stream here in the month of March, where I am going to attempt to uh, daily paint a portrait. And uh, if you haven't already found it, there's a link to a reference image in the description below. And um, it is a picture of this young man that I got off of Unsplash, unsplash.com. Great place for reference images that are copyright free. And so you'll want to grab that image um, really quickly, download it, and um, get it uh, so you can see it. I have it on a tablet so I can uh, look at it and uh, reference the colors and, and the values and all, which would be very important. I also have it uh, drawn here on my piece of 140 pound arches watercolor paper. And um, let me get started painting here really quick. Uh, I've got, um, again, my, my goal here in these times is, is really to push myself in my portrait painting to um, quickly, accurately uh, render a figure, uh, human figure. Now I'm only going to be doing like uh, head and shoulders types of um, shots of people. I'm not going to do full body. I'm going to focus on, I've already chosen the images I'm going to use during this time and I'm um, all, I'm going to do nice variety of men and women and different races, to skin color, things like that. Um, just to give variety, but I'm also going to try and find images that have really strong values in terms of um, like, uh, and this one is okay, this is actually really front lit, meaning the light's coming from the front, directly from the front, so he's kind of, the face is shaded kind of almost equally on both sides, which isn't really normally what I look for, but I just thought that was a very striking image and uh, overall good values throughout, so I decided I would use it. But normally I'll be looking for head and shoulder shots, um, high value contrast, uh, with usually shade on one side of the face um, so that you can really model the shape of the face. Um, even if the picture is taken from further away, I'll probably crop it and um, get in close so that um, I'm um, just, again, seeing head and shoulder. And uh, so I recommend that you do that when you get your pictures, uh, when you download them and transfer them to your paper, that you try to fill the paper with the image, the head and shoulders shot as much as possible. And um, uh, so that you, you can just focus on the figure, um, not the background, not the body, anything like that, just on the head and shoulder, okay? And also I'm working pretty small, six by nine here, which I tend to do for these quick, um, sketches because um, yeah it's just not it's not a lot of time again I'm trying I'm gonna try and finish these uh, pictures in um, less than 30 minutes and so I got my timer going here I think <laughs> somewhere I can see my timer maybe maybe not but anyways um, and um, yeah so here we go let's get started again I my goal is to do very little talking and and mostly just painting so uh, again here's that reference image uh, it's available uh, you want to get that and um, what I see here again as I just look at this um, I see uh, he has his top lit mostly kind of from the upper left uh, but mostly it's pretty straight on lighting but it's pretty much yeah no maybe top right looking like the shadow underneath his chin is going more towards the left uh, those bright blue eyes um, and uh, the hair is creating shadow there of course he's got nice kind of shape underneath his ch cheekbones um, and um, yeah, I'm going to, again, it's a, a Caucasian skin tone, so I'm going to be using like yellow and, and a pink. Uh, it's an opera uh, pink that I still have a little bit of. I'm using, I, I, I'm still figuring out the best way to do skin tone. I've always used yellow and opera. I know opera is fugitive, so not a great choice, but I'm going to use it anyways. And um, 
yeah he's kind of got a ruddy appearance kind of a, there's a bit of uh, orange browny orange in his skin tone as well so we'll shoot for that all right so let's get started um, you can see here my setup I'm trying to show you both the painting and my palette um, so I'm mixing up again this is Hansa yellow light which I just recently got pretty yellow and um, and then my opera here to get a little bit of pinkiness to it and I want to start with my lightest tones and um, retain the highlights and the highlights are obviously down the bridge of the nose in the uh, bridge above the nose above uh, to the left of the nose and right at the top of the cheek sorry the chin so everywhere else um, except for in those places I'm going to put down this really light application of and I'm even okay there's white in the eyes I need to retain um, this is a number two Degato quill um, and uh, very here and there's cheekbone I'm retaining white there and uh, chin the top part of the chin retaining there but not here very dark um, there on the A little bit of retaining it there and the ears fairly dark and the nose except for the top of the nose there and the bottom of the nose there is quite dark eye sockets are always darker because the light coming from above uh, so it's important to learn how to do that and I'm not too worried about the this color going over into the hair or whatever um, just because I'm going to blend that out in a minute I think I'm going to use kind of a burnt umber here for um, his hair and the darker areas so I'm grabbing some of that and um, again as I stated in, in the introduction I'm I'm trying to do an impressionistic sketchy a, a, a look to these and um, so I'm going to try and move fairly quickly we'll see how well I do with that it's also very early for me here it's uh, 6 a.m. and so <laughs> kind of half asleep still a little bit um, it's like oh when I got up this morning I'm like how am I going to be able to do this I mean I'm normally up this time anyways um, getting ready for work but I had to get up extra early to, to get ready for this and get ready for work and all of that. So I was like, okay, Lord help me. All right, back to some of my tones. I should come down here and do the neck as well. I kind of forgot that. And um, I want to retain the white of that shirt. Very important there. And um, yeah, sorry this is all dark in here so um, yeah I'm gonna grab a bit more of the red and darken it a bit um, and these areas that are darker now this is all wet and so it's going to flow emphasize some of these darker areas Okay, so it's darker under there and there. And again, I'm going to soften. I've got some areas of real 
um, strong, uh, you know, real sharp lines, which in some cases is okay, but I don't want that everywhere. So with my wet brush, um, which is clean wet brush, I'm going to soften some of these lines where where the you know it's particularly a soft blend like at the bottom of these cheeks and maybe even where I got the light went a little too far into an area where other areas I see it, it is a real you have to constantly looking at the shadows uh, the 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 gradation from dark to light and see okay is there a kind of a strong line there or not um, in some places there really is in other places not so there you go um, and I'm gonna come in and grab some more of my burnt umber I think I need to get myself some real burnt umber um, and not I don't know I have I think something that's more of a mix and I'm just going to come in and add some to these dark places. And I'm being careful not to get too close to the edge of the face there, because I know when I put this down, because it's pretty wet here, that this dark is going to, and it's doing it quite, quite a lot here. Um, it's bleeding over into the face, and some of that's okay, but um, I don't want to do that. I don't want that to happen too much, uh, and really go into the face too much. So I'm not, I'm not painting right next to, um, so this is a bit of a dry brush stroke here, especially where the hair comes up into the background. And, uh, like that. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There. And then back. Again, the areas where it seems to be really bleeding into the face the most. I've got I've cleaned off my brush. It's pretty dry. So I'm just going to come in here and just lift along in there a little bit. Don't need to worry about that too much because there is a lot of shadow in there. So um, I just don't want to make my the face be super muddy. Um, muddy, you know. You always want to avoid. Uh, as far as skin tones and getting shadows on skin tones, I really like to use blue more than say brown or something. Uh, just because other, if you use brown or any kind of neutral tint like gray or whatever, it makes the face look very dirty. And um, whereas blue highlights, since there's blue in the skin underneath, the, I guess underneath it all, um, then that works. Whereas the okay, so let's see here. While I'm, I'm gonna use ultramarine blue. I think as a nice contrast, even though I think his shirt is not really um, blue uh, I think it's darker than that I'm gonna uh, while I'm kind of letting that kind of dry a little bit I'm gonna come uh, in here and um, and um, just wet on dry here so it's nice rough edges where I'm laying the paint down using the side of the brush too. Uh, you don't always just want like some people think oh get your brush and fill in all the colors right, right all no no no. Uh, let's see how I did that with that edge that's kinda cool I think I like that. Um, let that just be. Don't do any more with that. Um, hmm. Excuse me. Uh, I'm trying to think what to do next. Um, I think I'm going to get a little bit of water here. Soften the edge of that there. I 
like a lot of times to add some nice bleeding in here. I like that. Um, and get some little bit more variety in this, I think, in places where it may be a little bit darker. I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about this this shirt other than just here maybe get a little bit of variety of value so it doesn't all look the same there's a little bit of a ridge along there as well so give it that sense there okay okay let's see back into cleaning my brush uh, face is now a bit drier if I look here there's a, there's a slight dampness to it but it's not real wet of course that is going to completely vary based on your locale like uh, how dry your environment is I had someone reach out to me and um, talk about um, how they live in a really dry area and so uh, their paint on the their um, paper is drying a lot faster than what they see is happening on mine which is totally I mean I live in the Pacific Northwest it's pretty humid here and so there's a lot of humidity in the air and all and so I think my paper stays drier than longer than other people's and things so all right now back in here you know I've also noticed I think my camera is on an auto focus which I need to next time make sure it's not because it, it tends to go in and out of focus trying to focus on my hands I'm sorry about that if it's going in and out of focus again rookie mistake uh, I thought I had set that properly I don't know let me know let me know in the comments if you have any problems. I, I probably won't read the comments till it's all over, but just because I can't read and paint at the same time. Hopefully you understand that. Darkening some of the darkest areas here. It's just kind of a little orangey or darker red uh, application of this. And again, you might be saying, gosh, I see real brown in those areas that are dark and you do it's true uh, looking at that there's a real ruddiness to his but I don't know I just don't want to use brown on his skin so I'm, I'm opting for more um, darkening with some of these orangey pinks and then I'm gonna um, I think come back afterwards and really um, a little bit of a bloom there and so I tried to with a dryish brush pick up and avoid that from spreading too much okay I also thought that this picture once I transferred it to the paper I was like you know I just think that it's a little um, it's kind of small I really think I should have zoomed in on it even more uh, when I transferred this okay um, to the paper so that I have so it, the face fills up the paper more so that I'm not dealing with such small little areas very difficult um, to work too small when you're trying to do to do people and all um, facial features all right Now, a hair color again. Boy. Looking from just around. 
trying to retain some of these areas where he has real white streaks going through his hair. So I'm picking up, um, again, it's um, picking up some pretty dry pigment, uh, you know, it's um, not, not very much water on the brush because I'm, I'm at a dangerous stage here where if I, um, have too much water on the brush here, there's a bit of water on the paper and, uh, it will, it will bloom out and uh, create a mess. So, and some of that's okay. Um, I'm not completely opposed to a little bit of mess, but I don't want too much of that. There we go. And I have the, the undertone of the lighter wash of brown, and now I'm going over that with this darker, and it's creating some nice, which I like. I, I think I'm going to let that, because again, his, his hair is really streaky, isn't it? And so to create some of that effect, um, I'm going to do something like that. And I'm really, again, getting a lot of blending down in here, but that, I decided that's okay because that's a little bit darker side of the face. And, um, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to leave that and not mess with that anymore, except... I will say that, and then I go back and mess with it, um, to say, I'm just going to take and just soften some of these edges, not all of them, just so I get lost and found edges. Lost edges are where you have more of a blurring along the edge, and can only happen if you soften, you know, with water. Okay, I'm thinking now the mouth, and uh, I think I'm also going to have to get a little timer that I set up, <laughs> maybe on my phone or something. Um, so when I start this, I kind of know because I can't have a, you know, my laptop, things are kind of running on that and all, and, all right, a little bit of pink, but that's too light, so, darkening that, only painted the top part of the lip, and a little bit of the lower down in here, since that's uh, the rest is kind of white, and I don't want I didn't want it to run everywhere. Kind of let that be. Lips are hard because if you think lips and you paint exactly what you think lips look like, uh, it'll just look weird. Um, so yeah, I like that. that looks good. Now I see, one thing I see um, is another thing I've been learning about is where you want to find your shadow areas and then join them. Like for example, here's a good example. I see where the shadow of the lower part of the chin actually goes right into this area underneath on the neck. And so if you look, you don't really see the line of the chin there very well, do you? you actually see the dark, you know, dark of one area um, coming in and um, basically combining with the dark of, of this other area. And that's, to me, important to try to keep that, create that connection. So how do you do that? You just bring just let the values there just cross right over from one area to the other.
and again I'm still kind of trying to keep just using these skin tone values right now and just a darker tone of them for now um, and then later I'm going to go over I think with the blue so resisting the temptation of using some other color come up in here darken that again Got my, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a little, uh, a little shot with my um, where am I here with uh, my hair dryer just so that um, yeah so go I'm going to mute it for a second. Hopefully that worked to mute that, and um, so you weren't blasted with the sound of that. All right, because I really want to come in. I'm, I'm seeing that to try to keep this short the way I want it to be, I may have to use the hairdryer a little bit to speed up certain portions because now um, I need this pretty dry to come in and do any of the other stuff. So I'm going to come in now and start to look at really light. I've got my ultramarine blue, French ultramarine blue. And now I'm seeing, okay, where are these dark areas? Shadow. Um, again, this is a blending of underneath the cheek and uh, underneath the chin, I should say, and, and down along the bottom of the chin and up in here and this eye socket. Cleaning the brush, softening some of this. A little too dark uh, that in that area there, so I'm lightening that. And. Uh, Uh, 
underneath the lips, very dark. It's always an area where you get a lot of light shed there and inside the ears. Squinting, we're really seeing okay, really, where's those darkest places? Um, and um, and I'm really taking actually an ultramarine blue here, even though it seems strange to use blue, it's really going to produce a dark color overlaying. Okay, then also adding a bit more of this pink overneath some of that blue and all of that. Okay, so I've got what I think are kind of my values that I want. And really trying to. Again, as you can notice, I haven't really gone smaller in my brush. Anything smaller than this Dogato 2, which even though it's a 2, it's a pretty large brush. It's a different numbering system. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now I want, I think I am going to go now into, I'm going to quickly dry this a little bit more. Now, if you're like me, you might be thinking, oh man, this looks, this, this looks crazy. It doesn't look very good. It looks kind of ghoulish or whatever. Well, you got to remember, we just have, our, we're just doing our tones underneath, and we haven't really gone back now and added in the details um, that would make, that will bring out, yeah, help this person look like a person, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. And so now. I've got my, uh, I've got basically, you know, some color for eyebrows here, and um, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here and add in some details um, with a little, slightly smaller brush. Again, I really want to see where these different things, um, my shapes combine or, or join. And there's a lot of joined shapes in here with eyebrows and Again, all, um, 
it's it, uh, burnt umber with ultramarine blue is a very classic color for creating uh, like shadows which is what I'm doing in here and these eyebrows and this area Okay, well, there we go, and I really don't, again, I'm trying to avoid using brown and shadow so I'm switching to my blue now even though I put some brown for eye for um, eyebrows and all I'm switching to kind of my blue to come out from those areas um, into the shadows on the side of the face there and um, underneath the eye sockets and back underneath the mouth and down in here and down into here um. and then I want to come in and grab some real light blue or some blue here, maybe even more of a cobalt blue than a ultramarine blue, just for those eyes. Just the eyes will be a different than any other part of the thing, just to so they stand out. dry a bit more now. Okay, well, I'm at about 30 minutes of painting, and this is definitely sketchy. Um, and um, but again, that was my goal. I think I was even saying I might like force myself to stop at around 30 minutes, even if I'm like, oh, that's like not even done, which is kind of the way I'm feeling right now. Um, but I'm just gonna come in with. Um, just the areas that really matter, like the eye, right? Um, you 
coming in and with a little bit of detail and um, might even need a smaller brush to do this and uh, because that'll give a sense of light life to the the painting if I can get a little bit of uh, yeah detail in the eye help a little bit there and similarly on like the um, the top lip has got to be much darker because that's where you know, the shadow is going to be And so I'm that. And, um, yeah, I think that I might have to call this good enough. And uh, it might grow on me when I step away from it and go, okay, well, I see what I was trying to do there. And all. Uh, left side of the nose needs a bit more differentiation. Um, also under the nose needs more shadow. So I'm kind of quickly doing that. I can't really see nostrils at all here yet, which are so kind of important. So this certainly could be something that, you know, you could, um, yeah. So there you go. Let me see if I can bring this in a little bit better see what the finished look is here. Uh, I'm gonna think I'm gonna stop here because I'm gonna try and follow my rule of doing this in like 30 minutes and um, some of the things I learned from this um, I think I want to make my pictures uh, the face the face bigger and have it fill my six by nine piece of paper a bit more so that I can work a little larger. It's difficult to work so small. Um, I'm going to probably have to dry, have my hair dryer handy every time I do this so I can draw, uh, dry and, and move from area to area without getting too much blooming because I was getting a lot of bloom. And uh, again, this is a sketchy, uh, quick rendering. I think you learn by, by painting subject subjects over and over and over again. And so working small and quick allows you to to do something and then move on to the next painting, you know, and just keep working on your techniques and stuff. So I'm not necessarily looking for a finished finished drawing, but I, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. So that's it for today. And it's six, almost 6.45. So we've been uh, going here for about 45 minutes and uh, a little bit of that was talking and hopefully you've enjoyed um, enjoyed this and can join me I'm going to do this try to do this every weekday at 6 a.m. Uh, uh, and um, I'm glad to have you join me and uh, learn along with me uh, how to do s portrait sketches and watercolor in around 30 minutes so again, thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow.